Welcome back to Guards TV in association with Polo Cab, covering all of the Cartier Queen's Cup. In this segment, we're going to see all of the knockout games leading into the quarterfinals, and we're going to see an interview with not one, not two, but three Pierres brothers. We're joined by Pelon Sterling, La Bamba de Eco. Very good performance. You're in the quarterfinal of the Cartier Queen's Cup. Thank you, Bediso. Uh, very happy. Uh, luckily, we had a we had a good win against a tough team. Uh, nothing. We didn't start the tournament the way we wanted, but luckily uh, we played well today and we went to the quarters, which is which is where we want to be. The first truck you knew, you you won 4-0. Was that the plan to come out strong and hit them hard and initially and just get in there? No, no. Luckily, it came out like that the first chucker. But no, it was a, we knew it was a tough tough team. Uh, and we knew exactly that we had to play well, we had to have a good day to, to beat them. And I think we did, we played well, the, the four of us, so, so we're happy to be there. I was going to say you all played well as a team. Jean-Francois Keane was in there, he was all over everybody, no matter what, he's a little fighter. Yeah. And of course, Juan Martin at the back, your teammate in the La Dolphina. I mean, superb from all of you. Yeah, it's a pleasure to play with them. It's our, our second year playing with Jean-Francois and his organization, which is, which is a very good one. We're happy to, to represent La, La Bamba Areco and we're happy to be there. We got a very tough uh, quarter-final, but, but we're going to give it a, a good go. I was going to say you have Facundo and Lion Dian and the boys in the quarter-final. They're looking pretty good, but they were, Dubai gave them a run the other day, seven chucker, eh? so it, it, it's not like they're unbeatable. See, it's, a, it's a very tough decision. Uh, there's many teams that are very competitive, everything is very even. Uh, as you say, the other day they had a really good game. Uh, Indiana is probably the team to beat because they're the champions, the last champions of the, of the of the Queens Cup. So I don't know. We are we know we have a chance. We need to play well again. We need to prepare, uh, get those horses ready that are going very well, and, and give it a good go. Well done, Pelon. Thank you very much for talking to us. Thank you. Primero es un privilegio tener a los tres juntos acá. Eh, más allá de que los tres juegan equipos diferentes acá en Inglaterra, eh, si se hacen el tiempo para poder estar en familia. Eh, sí, la verdad que eso casi siempre en todos los lugares que jugamos. Hay veces que nos toca juntos o a veces separados, pero este año coincidimos acá en que estamos los tres equipos en la zona de, de Midhurst. Y bueno, cuando hay que alquilar casas o lo que sea, se trata de de alquilar lo más o menos cerca posible para, para que las familias estén cerca. ¿Y hablan sobre los partidos, los cruces, ahora que están enfrentados? ¿O no se habla de ese tema? No, bueno, a veces cuando, cuando, cuando queda que por ahí se juegue en contra o no, o cuando juegas contra algún equipo que, que por ahí uno le jugó y ya sabe un poco cómo juegan y eso, pero, pero ahora, ahora se dio que, bueno, que el equipo de Nico y yo pasamos a cuartos, pero no jugamos en contra, así que... Eh, yo vos jugás contra Talandracas que nunca, nunca yo no lo jugué así que no tenemos mucho para opinar eh, y yo juego contra la bamba que ustedes tampoco Gonzalo se lo pasa ¿Te pasa la información por lo menos? Nah, bueno, un poco, así, si hay cosas para ayudar y si hay cosas que, que, que se pueden decir y, y que pueden llegar a ayudar al otro equipo, seguro ¿Y chicanas entre ustedes? ¿Y ¿Algún partido? ¿Algún enfrentamiento? Nah, no, porque... Tampoco se puede joder al que pierda, así que <risa> además de que perdió. Eh, ¿Se sienten parecidos en cómo compiten, en eh, cómo sienten los partidos? ¿Alguno es más, más tranquilo que otro? Yo soy el más tranquilo de lejos. Eh, no, yo por ahí el más tranquilo seguro de ser Gonza. Eh, no, pero siempre nos tomamos eh, todo con profesionalmente, siempre tratamos de ganar y todo, pero cada vez que entras a la cancha trata de ganar, pero siempre que por ahí nos toca en contra y todo. Es, es, es por ahí es diferente porque es un hermano, pero siempre con, con buena onda y actitud siempre se trata de ganar. Bueno, no, no hay tanto en, en polo, pero ¿qué pasa en fútbol? Cero de Boca, otro de River. Y ha sido intensa la final de, del año pasado. Para ellos fue intensa. Así que no somos tan fanáticos. No, eh, <risa> sí, pero, bueno, fue cura de Boca. <risa> se cambió. Muy chico era. Pero, de chico, ¿no? Se cambió. No, sí, siempre la familia, papá también es de Boca y... Pero bueno, también nos pasa que, que tenemos un amigo en común que es Leo Poncio, que juega en River, así que... Eh, 
nosotros no es que somos tan fanáticos del fútbol, sino que está bueno, por más que juegue en River, a mí yo un poco de sentimiento tengo que, que le vaya bien, así que no es tan grave. Paco, vos te gustan los chicos, pero fuiste el último en sumarte al equipo de los padres. Sí, el último. Tardé un poquito más, pero bueno, nada, ahora disfrutando al máximo, así que contento. Ya los hace subir a los caballos. Sí, ayer, primera vez, eh, pero igual es muy chiquito. Andre, quarterfinals, Carte Queen's Cup 2019. You must be a very, very happy man. Well, they're looking for. They're looking for. Okay. I think uh, after last year final, our, our aim is quite high, and I think quarterfinal is must for, for the team we have this season. Uh, we did not play well on Sunday against Talandragas, and I think today the team gave nearly our best and I'm sure we can do even better in, in the quarterfinals. And all that work that Ujoa did has paid off because here comes Juan Britos. Can he go all the way? Merlos on the fast grade chasing him behind. Britos got first run. Britos going to go. Merlos is not going to catch it. Britos finishes it off superbly. Beautiful done. I was going to say on Sunday you had a four goal advantage at the beginning of the first chucker. And basically on Sunday you played three and a half to four chuckers and the other two you gave away and, yeah. you, and you lost the game. Today you played six chuckers full on and the result shows success. Yeah, believe me it was quite serious conversation in our in our room after that game and uh, I think the team came really motivated yes. today. Yeah. The balls and try and come back in field. Good pressure there from Alario. In field he goes now he sets his target on the goal here. It is still with Alario Joa. He puts on the spurt, goes downfield towards the target. There's a shot down to the goal. There's going towards the target. I can't see with the umbars in the way. The goal is good and yeah. you must be happy with your own performance. Well I, I prefer my team to win it. It doesn't matter if I score or not. If you start playing high goal, you have to be quite good goal player, even if you're amateur. Donna, Heta is there, checks, turns, Heta shoots, Heta, beautiful done. Back up is good, where's Duplessis, and up towards Heta, beautiful play from Dubai, what back up, Heta Castagnola, it's another one. Finn Bartos only chased him behind, McDonough's going to goal here, Leicester's horse run, look at this from Pablo McDonough, he's on a quick one, near side Pablo McDonough, that is beautiful, superb Pablo McDonough. Heta still in there, great play, Heta leads the ball for Barto. Barto comes forward, this will be great teamwork, this will be a hell of a goal if he gets it, Barto angle shot, next shot, Barto beautifully done, superb play, yeah, surely, Min Podesta, the ball left behind, McDonough takes it affection, goal is good. Still with Barto in behind Strada, Barto. Look at this from Barto, goes out to the left, Barto, 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 oh, wow, what a goal. How do you see the English polo in these last years? I think it's been really good. Uh, England has been always tough, always very competitive, a lot of teams. Um, but see, I think last last couple of years there have been a lot of teams, a lot of good teams. I think a lot, there's a lot of players with uh, with the handicaps a little bit lower than some some other places in the world. So that makes it very competitive, and a lot of teams, a lot of a lot of patrons have chances to make good teams. So that makes it interesting for for everybody. And um, I think I don't know. I think uh, it's, it's, it's going very well. Uh, the fields are good. They're improving, um, so I, I love it here. Something else about the, the fields here? Of the, See, field the fields stuff? are improving. Uh, first of all, started here in Cowdery, making loans one and two really good. And then Brooksville and, and field, some, three. Some field three of Ambersham. And, and then the last couple of years, uh, for me, guards starting to improve a lot. They, they in number two, 
field number one. And now they have a new field in, at Flemish Farm that they become really good. And what they say, hopefully, I don't know what number it is. Is it it's five or three? No? Behind field one in guards. I think in the next couple of years it's going to become a, a high goal polo field. So it looks like both clubs are improving a lot. Uh, I think it has room to have, a, at the moment we have 12 teams, but it can be a place that can have close to 18. That would be probably the best number. Or that, because in one moment, around the late 90s or, or beginning of 2000, I think they reached to that level, about 17, 18 teams. So hopefully they can aim back again to that, that kind of polo. So can you tell me about the first part of the Queen's Cup? Uh, mine was a bit tough. Uh, um, the, the first one took so I let this to you for that question. No, it's been good. It's been, uh, well, some of the teams, my team been a bit lucky with this system of uh, 12 teams that only four go through to the quarters and the rest can have like another knockout game. So we've been lucky to be there and it's good for those teams, for example, my team that is a new team, new person, first time playing the highway. Uh, so so you, you still have a chance after the league game. And hopefully, well, now we have the quarterfinals against San Andracas, it's going to be really tough. But these knockout games, they can be for everyone. So at the moment, they, they seem to be so really tough and level teams and all the games being decided by not so many goals, so that means the tournament is doing good and the teams are really good organized. David, quarterfinals, Cartier Queen's Cup, you must be over the moon. Yeah, it's fantastic. I love it. I love it. It's the first year I've been here and uh, yeah, the speed is unbelievable. It's just uh, a 26 goal. This is much more quicker. Yes. Harper. In comes Kubi Takarino. Juan Gris has gone forward. He's got first run at Harper. The ball sent down towards the target out to the left hand side. Near side pick up. Didn't get a hold of it. Kubi Takarino. Near side goes to go. Surely Kubi. Takarino. Santi huge hit again. Look at this for pressure. It's going towards the goal. Where they go? No. Just out to the right. A little flick inside by the Sony. Surely Zabaleta. What was your inspiration to come over here? Who, who kind of put the idea in your head? What was the seed? Well, I uh, played with James Harper in Elliston in Australia. I'm a factor in Elliston in Australia. And James Harper uh, started chatting me about it. And him and James Wine became free from the Romanzo. Yes. Uh, they asked me if I'd be interested and then we managed to get Nico and Give it a go. Give it a go. now. This is more like it. And the ball's in the cloud to go. Right here comes Harper on the grey. Can he find the next shot or a tail shot? He's gone for the next shot. Oh my word! And the fields here. You played on the county. You played a guard. You played here at the Castle Ground of Flemish Farm. I mean, how are they? I mean, oh, they're you're, fantastic. You're, 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 yeah, no, they're fantastic. You know, like, like even after six chapters, you can still keep playing. Yes. At the end of the day, it's really good. And you play Talent Rackers, of course, on Saturday morning at Leon in the quarterfinals. That'll be a tough one, but if they're not unbeatable. No, that's right. And these guys, they're, going, they're getting their act together slowly. You know, yes. they haven't played together before. Yes. And, uh, no, it's really, and they're good guys. I love them. I'm really grateful that they play, they're playing with me. Oh, you know, okay. I'm really grateful okay. for that. Okay. okay. Well, I just got to say one thing, David. It's nice to interview someone that's my size. That's <laughs> they always have a go at me that I'm the shortest guy on the team and every photo I just down on my knees. So I love being interviewed by you. <laughs> Congratulations. Well, well, you part of it. Thank you. Thank you. No, siempre estuve bien montado desde chico, eh, eso gracias a, a papá que, eh, que jugábamos las potrillitas, que estemos lo mejor montado posible y, y bueno, quedé con un gusto bastante exigente y me gustan que, que sean sobre todo fáciles, o sea, eh, no, no muy grande de tamaño, pero principalmente que tengan buena boca y bueno, después con agilidad se va, se va agarrando un poco de velocidad. ¿Ustedes tienen la misma exigencia? No, obviamente el caballo bueno es, nos gusta a todos, parecido, pero son distintos por ahí, distintas 
distintos tipos de caballos que nos gusta cada uno. Que eso está bueno porque podemos repartirnos un poco los caballos que tenemos en, en la cría. Eh, eh, pero sí, Gonza por ahí juega más las yeguas un poco más chicas. Eh, y a mí me gustan por ahí, me gustan, son buenas chicas, me gustan, pero también me gustan las yeguas por ahí más grandes y con más fuerza y con más potencia. Pero eh, la yegua buena nos gusta a todos, así que eso está bueno. Y vos, Nico, tengo entendido que tenés una. Lo que, que, me, lo que les sobra a ellos lo agarro yo. <risa> No, ¿Tenés una que tenés de juvenil? Sí, tuve la suerte de esa, esa la agarré yo y por suerte nunca se le subió en ello porque me había sobrado poquito. Pero no, no la verdad que eh, por ahí sí, más de chico me iba tocando lo que le iba sobrando a ellos, pero por un tema de edad y un tema de, de como cualquier hermano menor, pero la verdad que tengo una atención muy grande, mucha caballada, mucha, hay mucha gente trabajando atrás de esto y la verdad que tenemos la suerte de estar los tres bastante bien montados en, en, en todo lado del mundo, así que eh, estamos, no, no nos podemos quejar ninguno. Sé que además del polo les gusta el golf. Sí. ¿La mejor cancha que han jugado? Augusta. Ah, Augusta, sí. Augusta. ¿Y algún conocido que hayan compartido cancha, que les haya divertido? Y Facu hay un poquito más. Sí, eh, yo el año pasado tuve la suerte de jugar dos días seguidos. Un día con Arnie Els y al día siguiente con Adam Scott. Así que... Esa fue experiencia así como de golfista, jugando al golf fue lo mejor que me pasó, lo más divertido. ¿Y nervios estar ahí al lado? Bastante, de... sí, porque con Ernie no, porque estábamos jugando nosotros dos y uno más y era muy relajado, pero con Adam Scott era un torneo y era un program y había gente mirando y sí, ese día un poquito más de nervios, pero los primeros solo, después ya se me pasó. Sí, verlo jugar de cerca es impresionante, eh, es divertido verlos cuando practican, cuando tiran pelotas. Eh, no solo a él, ¿no? a todos los jugadores, la verdad que se, se, si te gusta el golf es un programón. Si tuvieran que ponerse un handicap de polo en el golf, ¿qué serían? Yo ¿Mantendrían sería... lo de ustedes o no? ¿Eh? ¿Mantendrían el que tienen en polo? No, eh, no, 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 ni pedo. <risa> eh, y tendríamos que tener... Eh, ¿Qué? ¿Seis goles? ¿Siete goles? No, cinco, seis. Cinco, seis goles. De polo, ¿no? ¿Es importante tener los videos filmados de los partidos para verlos después del análisis? Yo creo que sí, últimamente, la verdad que los partidos, el polo ha ido progresando y, y ahí ya tenés coach, tenés muchas cosas, eh, mucho análisis y con el tema de los videos eh, acelera a, a poder ver cosas que, que en la cancha por ahí no te acordás o o se te pasaron, pero con el análisis de video se, te, se aprende mucho. First quarter final is Talandrakis versus Scone Polo. Then we've got La Indiana versus La Bamba de Reco. UAE Polo Team versus Park Place. And VS King Power versus the Dubai Polo Team. So join us the next time you see us, we will have the results from the quarterfinals and we're going to have an interview with the absolutely magnificent Hilario Joa talking about his stallion and three of his other best horses.
Well, ladies and gentlemen, a very, very good afternoon to you all and a hugely warm welcome to the Duke's Ground here at the Guards Polo Club for the second quarter-final of the Cartier Queen's Cup for 2019. The two teams, La Indiana, will play La Bamba de Areco. Now, La Indiana are 3-0 and o for the tournament. They are unbeaten. But I'll tell you what, they were given a fright on this very field. The last game they played, they played against the Dubai team and it was an absolutely incredible game of polo and if you get a chance to watch it please do so it is uploaded onto the guards tv website so if you get a chance to watch la indiana dubai watch it at your leisure superb game it went to seven chuckers la indiana coming out in the seventh by a score of 16 goals to 15. la bamba they had to qualify they played the other day and they won convincingly against Mura Sanctus. And here they are in the quarterfinals, the second game of the weekend, quarterfinal weekend, as I call it. And La Indiana, La Bamba will be on the way very, very shortly indeed. Tomorrow we see two more games. The last two quarterfinals of the, the 2019 Queen's Cup. And I'm just looking through my notes here and give you the times for those ones. We have from the castle ground at Flemish Farm at 12 o'clock. We have, where am I? It'll be King Power in Dubai, and then in the afternoon at three o'clock on the Queen's ground, Park Place will play UAE. They're the last two quarterfinals to be played tomorrow. Two teams are coming out onto the field for the start of six chuckers here on the Duke's ground, and place in the semi-final awaits the winner. I'll give you a quick rundown of who's playing for La Indiana at number one. On one goal is Dylan Bacon, and he's filling in for the injured Michael Bickford, the Patron. At number two, handicap three goals from England, Jimbo Fuster. Three, handicap eight goals from Brazil, Rodrigo de Andrade. And a back, handicap ten goals, the incredible Facundo Pieres. For La Bamba de Areco, at number one, handicap zero goals is Jean-Francois de Caux from France. At two, handicap three goals is Kean Hall. Three, handicap from Uruguay, David Sterling, and nine goals. And a back, handicap ten goals, one Martin Nero. Now, David Sterling and one Martin, they are one half of the Fab Four. The Fab Four, the La Dolphina team that have won the Argentine Open for the last six years in a row. The other two players in that team, of course, being Pablo McDonough and that bloke called Cambiasso, the legend. Your umpires are Jason Dixon and Julian Appleby. Your referee is Peter Wright. Six chuckers. Now we've seen a quarter final this morning, and a lot of people said it was a big upset. It was a hell of a performance from Scone Polo. They beat Talandrakis. I think this final score was 12 8, something like that. There was four goals, the difference in it. And that was a hell of a performance from Scone. They didn't give Talandrakis any time at all on the ball from the off. And at one stage, they were winning nine goals to two. So well done to Scone. They are in the semi final of the Queen's Cup 2019. Happy days to those boys. We're almost set here. Players out on the field. Won't be too long before we will be underway. Bright conditions here. We had a lot of rain yesterday, but there's been a lot of wind today. It's actually warm. And the grounds are drying out. And I think all the groundsmen and indeed any gardeners around the country in this part of the world will be very happy with the amount of rain that fell because the ground was pretty getting pretty parched, I can tell you. So the I'm just looking, I'm waiting for the... In fact, he's doing it now. Jamie Hayward is the commentator for the crowd here and he's introducing the La Bamba team. Juan Martin Nero, the last to come out there. And now it's La Indiana in the white. As I say, Dylan Bacon filling in for Michael Bickford. And good luck to Michael. We hope to see him back on a horse as soon as possible. Here's Jimbo Fusta, red helmet, very distinctive. Rodrigo de Andrade. 
Eichels from Brazil, and there's Facundo Pieres. Now, let me tell you something about Pieres. He's on a 22-game winning streak. If he wins this game, it'll be 23. He went to America this year, played 16 games, won 16 games in, in, in the United States, including the USA Open. He came back to England, played in the Trippers Challenge, won three games in a row there, and he's won three games in a row so far in this Cartier Queen's Cup. 22 games, winning streak for Facundo. I don't know what the record is, but this boy is heading in the right direction as far as breaking records are concerned. Incredible polo player. They're lining up on the far side. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. First chucker. Landian in the white. La Bamba de Areco in the wine colours. And straight away, this Facundo Pierre as he sends a long ball up towards his number one, Dylan Bacon. Being taken on in behind by Jean Francois de Coe. Dylan Bacon de Coe. Angle shot, Dylan Bacon. He shoots as wide. Just out to the right hand side. Bacon. Almost good effort. And that's the way P Pierre is, likes to play this. He uses those young boys up front. He's not afraid to send that long ball up there. He knows they can carry the ball. And at the same time, if required, take out men away from the play and let him or Rodrigo go forward. Knock in from the back to be taken by Juan Martin Nero. He's on a bit of a roll here now. He's got a bit of a Jimbo Fuso chasing him behind. Nero down the side with space to maneuver. Pierre is out to his left hand side. There's the ball sent inside. Big drive by Nero. Looking to find Keane Hall. Bacon goes back to the fan. Hall, Bacon. Bacon takes out the man. He's called out of the play by Rodrigo, but the ball goes over the back line to the left and goes wide. So, La Bamba coming out with intent here. They're looking to come forward and send that big ball up towards that Landiana goal and put the white team under pressure. As Pierres brings it forward, Ooh, we have a whistle on the play and was Kean Hall, was he riding off or was, I should say, was the Andrada riding off Kean Hall because he was the blocking player to the person taking the ball in and the penalty has been given to La Bamba. And it's a big chance here for Juan Martin Nero to put La Bamba with a one goal advantage. Andrada taking away Keen Hall away from the player bringing the ball forward. That was Facundo Pieres. I think that's what it was for. Anyway, Nero for 1 0 La Bamba. Bright sunshine on the Duke's ground at guards. It's high. Straight through for the score. Beautiful strike from Juan Martin Nero. La Bamba 1, Landiana 0. Ground cutting up just a tad. It was heavy rain here yesterday. It is drying out all the time. It's bright sunshine now and wind. Umpire wants a little bit of space between the two teams as he throws the ball into play. Who wins? Oh, we have a player on the floor and it looks like it was Jean-Francois Decaux. Not too sure exactly what happened there. He's up on his feet. The horse is okay. Jean-Francois is okay and he will remount and will re start with another rolling, I think. So they will line up again. 1-0, La Bamba. Or will we have a penalty? Was there a foul there? No, I don't think so. Lining up again. <clears throat> Here we go. Players keen to get on with it. They're going off into each other's territory. Now the ball is put into play and the ball pops up in the air. Who's going to get a hold of it? Looks like Sterling brings it away. La Bamba have the call here. Oh, we have another player on the floor. Is it Jean-Francois again? 
Now, not too sure what's happening here, if his horse is throwing him off, if the horse is rearing or what the hell is going on with Jean-Francois, but that's twice in a row inside 10 seconds. Is he going to remount? Or will he change the horse? Well, he's remounting. So he's going to go off and change this horse, and rightly so, because it can do him an injury, or maybe not. I haven't seen exactly what he was, the horse was doing or why he was coming off. He's a good horseman, is Jean-Francois. He doesn't just get off the horse very lightly or come off easily. I was looking at Sterling taking the ball away from the throw-in. Anyway, another lineup with just over two minutes gone in the opening. Chaka. Ball is in play again. Sterling gets there in front of Pieres. Sterling being hustled there by Pieres. He's got to play the backhand here or try and bring it around. Look at this there. He was faffing around with it and he's lost control. And Facundo Pieres has the call. Taken on by Sterling again. This time he gets the backhand over to the far boards. Who's going to win there now? Jean Francois de Co with Dylan Bacon. Over the side they go. Fuster taken on by Sterling. Sterling. Trying to turn around, helped out by teammate there, uh, Juan Martin Nero. A little flick down the boards by Nero. Di Andrade is in behind, gets the hook, and the ball tries to bring it in field, helped out by Facundo. Spoots has gone forward for the pass, so to Di Andrade. Chasing in behind there is Keen Hall. Look at this, Di Andrade. Ooh, we have another whistle on the play. What on earth is going on? Because I'm looking at the Andrade taking away. There's a yellow card has been issued. And I'm sorry, I can't tell you. I don't have a replay. I was looking at the Andrade taking away the man and leaving Jimbo Fuster free to go to goal. Something happened in behind or else somebody said something to the umpire. So, a penalty has been awarded to La Bamba de Areco from the halfway line, penalty 5B. So, drama in the first three minutes of this opening chaka here. <coughs> It'll be Juan Martin Nero who'll strike this ball for La Bamba. Deco and Kean Hall go forward. Juan Ma, there's the loft that drive, it's out to the right hand side, chasing onto it is Dylan. Dylan Bacon, backhand by Bacon, wasn't great. It's been picked up by Sterling. But it just goes over the back line to the right. Angle was very acute there for Pelon to score. Knock in, Lion Diana. Game hasn't really got going just yet. Now Facundo Pieres to bring it forward. And... Keen Hall in the way of Facundo, impeding him as he went forward. Whistle is gone. Penalty La Bamba, halfway line. Now, halfway. Facundo, I reckon that it should have been further up the field. 5B, there's two players off, Fuster and Dylan Bacon, so it's four against two as it stands. Now Fuster comes forward, Bacon just in behind him. Facundo has the ball, and he's bringing it upfield now for La Indiana. He's gone past Pelé, Sterling, still with Facundo. There's traffic in front here, Sterling's looking for the hook, Facundo still with the ball, he's found his space. Look at this, a little flick forward from Facundo Pieres. They look for the backhand, they couldn't find it, the goal is good. And Pieres, that's what he can do, he zigzagged his way through traffic there. It was like Spaghetti Junction, it made no difference, the, score is, the scoreboard reads one goal apiece. Two and a half minutes remaining. In the opening, Chaka. 
change of ends over on the far side. Off we go. It's in play. And it will be the Andrade gets the ball. Look at this from the Andrade. He's gone around the pack. He's going up the middle of the field now. The Andrade Sterling's back to defend. He looks for a big drive. Sterling anticipates, goes back to defend. Open back and by Sterling is strong. Facundo reads it well, goes back up sent back in field by Facundo Jean-Francois taken on by Di Andrade who has the ball there's a big drive by Di Andrade out to the left hand side wide 1-1 one, one. score remains 2 minutes remaining in the opening chucker Nero from the back for La Bamba Taking it forward, Jimbo Fuster's waiting to challenge him. Now, we have another yellow card being issued. I think it is Jimbo Fuster who was impeding La Bamba, Juan Martin Nero, as he came forward. So, Fuster and, and another yellow card was issued too, and I don't know who it was to. It's hard to work it out from here when he, the umpire puts his arm in the air with three or four players in the one area, and it's hard to know which, exactly which player it was. Anyway, Pierre is having a chat with the umpire. Sterling coming into the fray now and was well, something said that shouldn't have been Facundo is still arguing here with the umpire and they're advancing the ball now in favour of La Bamba and it's a chance for them to regain the lead here because the ball has been moved up to the 60 yard spot another chance for Juan Martin to make it two goals to one with less than two to play in the opening chaka here He's still having a chat. Now, he is the captain. He's wearing the armband. He's entitled to have a word with an umpire, but he has to be careful what he says and how he says it. Juan Martin Nero for 2-1. This will get the ruffles up on Pierre's, won't it? Happy days. Big drive, Pierre takes a little deflection off of Malas. It goes through for the score anyway. And one Martin, two out of two in the penalty department. They lead. Two goals to one. La Bamba. Big crowd here in the stand. The guards here in the Duke's ground. Right. Ball in play, far side. It pops out into the Labamba side. Nero backhand, little thrown around. Tries to find Sterling over on the board. He knew where his man was. That was purely instinctive from Nero. Waiting there to challenge him is the Andrada. Little pass in field by Nero by Sterling towards Nero. Nero wastes no time in sending it upfield, but he didn't get the big shot he wanted. He's running onto it now. The right off is strong between him and Pierres. In when Jean Francois de Co didn't have a play, and it was Pierres who possibly had the right of way, whistle's gone again. Scrappy chucker, I have to say, ladies and gentlemen. Very, very scrappy indeed. Yellow card, people coming off their horse. Whistles, whistles everywhere. Not the chucker that we are, not the game rather, that we have anticipated and what we've been seeing throughout the course of the Cartier Queen's Cup, but I'm sure it'll open up a little bit in the next few chuckers. Pierres brings the ball forward, leaves it now for Diandrade. Rodrigo with the call. Infield he comes. Sterling will go with him. Diandrade is on a quick one. Look at this now. He looks up to see where the target is. Sterling still looking for the hook. The ball sent into the middle. Jean Francois. Jimbo Fuster. What a play, Jimbo Fuster. Near side by Fuster. Beautifully executed. Goal is good. It's two goals apiece. Fuster, the scorer. And there goes the hula, ladies and gentlemen. Well 
that is the end of what I can only describe as a scrappy opening chucker here on the Duke's ground. Second quarter final of the day. Scoreboard reads Landiana 2. La Bamba de Reco 2. Back in a few moments with the second. Here is. Goes forward. Here comes the goal shot. Lovely goal. Way down the field for Kundo. Dylan comes in. Stolen there by Barto Castanola. Barto Castanola shoots on the angle. It's looking good. It's looking very good. I think he's off the field. In comes Andrade. Andrade reaches out. I think that's going to go all the way. Andrade. In comes Andrade, what a sensational goal! A great bit, horse called Rosario, launched there by Barta Castanola, picked up by Heta Castanola, what a goal! Normally plays her in the third chucker, she's a tremendous mare, he leaves it behind, called off it by Andrade, Andrade launches it towards the target area, it's looking good, it's looking very good! And taken beautifully out there, it's Jimbo Fusa who's been left on his own. Jimbo Fusa, can he put it through? It looks good, it looks good. What a goal! Here comes Facundo on cartridge, this horse from Ireland. He drives it towards the guy, I don't believe it. Team, here comes brother Barto, brother Barto Castanola, Barto, Barto, little back shot to Heta, Barto to Heta, struggling to catch for Kundo Pires, Pires in the air, I don't believe it, I don't believe it, what a fantastic goal! She's in, does just enough to hook, Heta stick, Barto comes through from the rear, Heta, Barto, Barto shoots, and he puts it through! Coming back out of the field the second chuck, a 2 2 2 on the scoreboard, as I said, the end of the opening chucker, a scrappy chucker, but that's all right, we forgive them. We have seen some incredible polo throughout the course of this tournament. This most prestigious of prizes to win in the polo calendar, the Cartier Queen's Cup. Ball is in play from the umpire. Facundo Pieres gets it for Landiana, but he loses it. Sterling has it. Tries to go past, in comes Nero, sends it upfield, unlucky, takes a little deflection off the horse. Now Pierre's backhand is strong. He knew where Di Andrade was. He's on the boards over there and he's found the ball. Sterling was there with Di Andrade. He gets to drive under the neck down the board. Sterling puts him over the boards and he'll come in now for the little flick around on the near side. Sterling infield, clever play from Pelon. Infield now, taken on by Jimbo Fuster with the right off. Another big drive by Sterling, sent down towards Jean-Francois de Coe. Bacon's in there as well, looking for the hook. De Coe shoots the goal! Jean-Francois puts it wide. Almost from the Frenchman. Good effort, good teamwork from La Bamba. They're not hanging around with the ball. They're using it. They're sending it up there and putting the pressure on La Indiana. And that ball wasn't far away from the goal as Pieres brings it forward. Kean Hall is waiting to tackle Facundo, left now for Di Andrade, who's free. Di Andrade with a long drive up towards Facundo, good play by Sterling, takes out the man, looks for the backhand, fails to make contact, over the top from Facundo, a rare miss. Jean-Francois just takes it back in towards his own back line momentarily, gives the ball now to David Sterling, Sterling's on the halfway line, they're looking to get going here now, Sterling cuts in field and makes a bit of space here. Sterling in behind, goes forward, in behind is Facundo, Jimbo Fuster, he's gone past them all here. Sterling, there's a shot to go by Sterling, again the angle was wrong he couldn't find it it goes out to the right and wide they're having chances here La Bamba they're putting the pressure on Landiana but the score remains 2-2 and again Pieres from his back line Keen Hall waiting this time the hit wasn't great the Andrade Oh, in went Keen Hall looking for the ball. Facundo went in there also. I think it may have been 
holds ball. The umpire's whistle is gone. And the penalty will go the way of La Bamba. Now, Keane has dismounted. His horse may have taken a little knock in that incident. And he'll take his horse away. And he'll get onto a fresh mount and the horse will be checked over by the vet. Make sure all is well. Meanwhile, the penalty, it looks like it's going to be from 40 yards for one Martin Nero to look to convert Another hit. He's converted two already. 100%. And the two he took were penalty fours from 60 yards. So in theory, this shouldn't be a problem for him. But anyway, theory is one thing. Actually doing it's the other. I'm telling you a lie, I think it's actually a penalty. Two from 30 yards. So here comes Nero, looking to make it three goals to two, two minutes, gone in the second chakra. It is a penalty three, I beg your pardon, from 40 yards. They certainly won't stop that. It's high in the sky, up towards the pearly gates. The goal is good. One Martino, well, one Martin Nero, three from his penalties, and three two to score for La Bamba. Back to the middle they go. Bright sunshine. Duke's ground, Guards Polo Club. Ball is in play, lineup is won by. Sterling has it for La Bamba. They're coming out with intent here, La Bamba. They're putting the pressure here on Landiana. Big drive by Sterling. Look at this, Jean Francois de Co. Has he given it too much? I think Sterling is it still in play. Angle shot by Jean Francois. Couldn't get enough onto it. It goes out to the right of the post and wide. So, Landiana, they haven't really got going yet, Landiana. They've been prevented by doing so by the tactical La Bamba. Pieris cuts the ball out to the right. Has he given it away to Juan Martin Nero Sterling? I should say uh, Nero there with Andy Andrade. Nero must get out of the way. Oh, in came Keane Hall. Stole it. Look at this. The backhand by Hall. Can he find Nero? Chasing is Nero. Near side next shot. No, Nero. My word, where did that come from, from Nero? The ball just didn't reach the goal line. Out to the right-hand side, right of the goal it went, and it's taken on by Pieris. But has the call now, just slows things down a tad in front is Keane Hall, giving them grease, grief rather, and it's now Facundo into the centre. He's made good space here. He's on a bit of a run, but he's gone over the top. The ball just popped up. The backhand there by Nero didn't get much onto it. Backhand again by... Keen Hall didn't quite get what he wanted on it and it's taken on by Facundo again. Pieres has the ball. Out to the left hand side it goes. Backhand going in there. Sterling trying to get a hold of it. Pieres trying to get away. Just goes over the top. Sterling will get it and bring it around. He's lost control. Here comes Jimbo Fuster. He doesn't get control and it is Nero who saves the day for La Bamba. Takes the ball into the bottom right hand corner now. One Martin Nero. He just waits for Fuster to go past. Into the centre he goes and he has room to manoeuvre here. They've gone forward looking for the pass. Facundo almost steals it away. There's the pass upfield for Jean-Francois. Dylan Baker with backhand. Oh, it didn't get much onto that. Here comes Keane Hall but Facundo will get there first. Oh, was he impeded by Hall as he went to strike the ball? Facundo Pieres. Whistle's gone. I think so. Well, neither theme, team have really found the rhythm just yet. Facundo has dismounted from his horse. Little coming together there with Keane Hall. And it looks like they're all going to go off and change. With just over two minutes remaining in the second chakra. Well, the scoreboard actually says 26-2. I don't think that's right. It should be 
to La Bamba, to La Indiana. And Facundo still on the field, walking back. Just to tell you about Michael Bickford, Dylan Bacon is filling in for Michael. He's devastated not to be playing out here with his team as he broke his arm in the Trippets Challenge. And we wish him the quickest of recoveries. We'll try and have a word with him later in an interview. To see how he is and what's going on and when he'll be back. And just looking at his team's performance. In fact, he's in the crowd here. I might even try and get a hold of him halfway during the game and just have a chat with him to see if he's happy with what's going on with Landiana. Maybe he'll want to talk to me. Maybe he won't. I don't know, but I'll give it a try anyway. Why not? Meanwhile, it's going to be a hit from the halfway line in favour of La Indiana. All the players have gone off and got onto fresh mounts. And I've got to say well done to the, all the lads and lasses down on the pony lines. Amazing work they do with the turnout of these magnificent horses. Facundo Pieres from the halfway line, La Indiana trailing by one, it's 3-2. Pieres with the long ball, sent down field, comes off the horse of one Martin Nero. Nero turns that horse around very quickly indeed, tries to get the away. Backhand by Jimbo Fuster, nicely done. Sterling goes in there with Pieres. Pieres on the near side, being hustled also in there by Keen Hall. The ball's out to the left-hand side of the goal. Jimbo Fuster looking to try and bring it around. Fuster's done well. Next shot, Fuster. But there was a whistle. There was a whistle as he went around there and he may have fouled as he brought the ball around. Let's see what they're going to do here. Was Fuster fouled or was... It looks like it's going to be in favour of Labamba. So it was Labamba... Sorry, in favour of Landiana. So it was Labamba who committed the crime and 30 yards for sure for Pieres to make it 3-3 three, three. don't look at the scoreboard it's 26-2 at the minute La Bamba that's completely wrong Facundo no problem for Facundo Pieres is three goals apiece Now there's just two minutes remaining in this second chucker. And what I have to say so far, it's been pretty scrappy. <coughs> Ball is in play. The Andrade gets the break from the lineup on Sterling. Rodrigo downfield he goes, Sterling chasing. De Andrade, can he go all the way here? Sterling will take the man, bring the ball around on the near side. Sterling, what a play by Sterling. I think he almost scored an own goal there. But in comes Facundo on the back line, being pushed into the corner by Sterling. De Andrade is there as well. Facundo flicks it around the corner. Look at his horse operate. Look at this boy man operate. The shot by Facundo Pieres goes across to goal mount, out to the right hand side and wide. They haven't found their eye yet, have they, these boys? Knocking La Bamba de Areco with a minute to go in the second chakra, and we have another whistle. Play just stops. Just wait. I think Hall was given something by the up, whatever he went and threw something behind the goal. <coughs> One Martin Nero sends the ball under the horse's neck over to the far side to find David Sterling. Sterling there with the Andrada. First time drive by Sterling, sends it into the opposite half of the field. Dylan Bacon goes back to the fence, called off by Jimbo Fuster. Fuster goes over the top. Ooh, they're rolling the heap over on the far side. We have another whistle and who had the right away is the question. 
The umpires are heading downfield. It's gonna looks like it's gonna be in favor of the attack attacking team who are La Bamba de Areco. Where will they place the ball is the question. Will it be a 60, a 40 or a 30? It's going to the 40 yard spot at least. Umpire Julian Appleby. Penalty three, 40 yards for one Martin Nero to make it 4-3. The Landiana player in the wrong place. Didn't give away the right of way to La Bamba. Nero from 40 yards along the ground they can stop and it's off the post and goes out to the left and wide and he looks down he wanted to bang the mallet off the turf and he knows that that could be well we'll see later on if that miss was significant the hit outfield by Facundo Pierre is taken on by Juan Martin. In comes Jimbo Fuster to help out his teammate. He flicks it forward now, trying to get away from Sterling. Jimbo Fuster, young Englishman. He stopped there. The ball goes over the side to the left hand, over the sideboard, oh, sideboard, sideline. And who will have the hit? The Hooter is gone, ladies and gentlemen. And what was another scrappy chucker here? Hard to get into a rhythm with this game as. That is the end of the second. The scoreboard reads 3 to La Indiana, 3 to La Bamba de Areco. Can be back with the third in a few moments. Thank you very much. We'll see you then. Here is. Goes forward. Here comes the goal shot. Lovely goal. Way down the field. Facundo. Dylan comes in. Stolen there by Barto Castanola. Barto Castanola shoots on the angle. It's looking good. It's looking very good. I think he's off the field. In comes Andrade. Andrade reaches out. I think that's going to go all the way. Andrade. In comes Andrade, what a sensational goal! A great bit, horse called Rosario, launched there by Barta Castanola, picked up by Heta Castanola, what a goal! Normally plays her in the third chucker, she's a tremendous mare, he leaves it behind, called off it by Andrade, Andrade launches it towards the target area, it's looking good, it's looking very good! and taken beautifully out there. It's Jimbo Fuster who's been left on his own. Jimbo Fuster, can he put it through? It looks good, it looks good. What a goal! Here comes Facundo on cartridge, this horse from Ireland. He drives it towards the guy, I don't believe it. Team, here comes brother Barto, brother Barto Castanola, Barto, Barto, little back shot to Heta, Barto to Heta, struggling to catch Facundo Pires, Pires in the air, I don't believe it, I don't believe it, what a fantastic goal! She's in, does just enough to hook, Heta stick, Barto comes through from the rear, Heta, Barto, Barto shoots, and he puts it through! And the ball runs loose for Facundo Pires, who plays a little bit of tennis. Here comes Facundo Pires. He's got no one in front of him. He's going to have to do all the work on his own. With him comes Barto Castanola, through towards the target area. Facundo Pires, Facundo, 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 Facundo Pires! Backhand shot, James Fuster. Ball runs loose. In came Andrade. And he's put it through, Rodrigo Andrade put it through. And that will seal the match for them. Andrade came in and number 16 goes to La Indiana.
was just had a little technical problem there. But big drive by. Look at this pass from Nero down towards his teammate there, Keen Hall. Going to go, Keen Hall. The big drive by Nero, and they were caught napping, Landiana. It's 4 3. La Bamba with the lead again. They haven't been behind in this game. Not yet, anyway. And this long ball. The long ball game is what La Bamba have been playing and is paying dividends here. Not so much they've done that in the, in the some games that they lost. They were retaining possession, trying to mess around with it in the midfield and they lost possession and well, went down. Here we go. Diendrada from the lineup gets a hold of it now for Landiana. Rodrigo taken on by Sterling on the grey. Rodrigo backed up by teammate D Dylan Bacon. Bacon goes forward now. Look at this Bacon. The back can is missed by Sterling. Turn around there by Keane Hall with a strong backhand. Pierres is there taken on by Nero. Backhand, first time backhand by Pierres. Sent back in field there by turn around. Beautiful done by Dean Zara. In comes Dylan by Keane Hall again. Another strong backhand. What a play, Keane Hall. And there's the hit upfield by Jean-Francois de Co. Down the board he goes. Gets hooked on the near side. Taken on now by Pierres. Over the top by Nero. Pierres has time to check and turn. Pierre is looking to go forward and get the break. Nero going back to the fence. In behind is Sterling on the grey, trying to get the hook on Pierre. Is still there. There's a the little flick. Unlucky comes off the horse. As the ball buried, I think it is. We've lost sight of the ball. It's fell into a hole. They'll have to dig it out and they'll have a roll in. Restart with a roll in. Umpire has to dig the ball out. One and a half minutes gone, third chucker, 4 3 Landia, I should say La Bamba. Here we go, halfway inside the La Bamba half of the field. Off we go. Sterling on the grey, gets a hold of it. Sends it across field, didn't make any ground, but taken on now to his left hand. Good work by Keen Hall, or Jean Francois rather. Good work by Sterling. Jean Francois comes around, trying to get a hold of it, gets a little bit onto a backhand by Bacon, takes a little deflection taken on by Diendrada. Landiana coming forward now. He has a little bit of space in the centre here. Sterling's on the grey, will try and take care of him. Nice play by Juan Martin Nero. That's the ball settle. No ground being made yet. They've only gone to the opposite side of the field. Jimbo Fuster on Nero now, the challenger. This is really tough cat and mouse stuff here, isn't it? Sterling has the call. Diendrada gets out of the way. Sterling Sends it upfield for Nero. Keen Hall there as well. Gets away from the chasing. Facundo Pierres gets the hook and the ball. Brings it around. Look at his horse turn. Facundo. Backhand by Keen Hall. Didn't find it. It's on the boards again. Di Andrada. Oh, it's scrappy stuff, isn't it? They're all looking for a piece of it. Who's going to get it? Now it's Facundo, look for a big one and gets it, but Sterling again goes back to the fen. Jimbo Fuster will put the pressure on Pelon. Sterling, Fuster overrides, Sterling, clever play, checks, turns. There's a mallet head on the ground, I don't know whose it is, and there's the pass out field by Sterling. Looks to find Jean-Francois Deco on the halfway line. The Frenchman has the call, can he go all the way here? Jean-Francois, in field he goes, the ball just pops up. He's got to check up the backhand from Facundo's missed. Turning onto it quickly there will be Di Andrade and it's Landiano come forward. Both sides of the horse being used by Di Andrade. Coming in Keen Hall. Looked for the backhand, didn't get a hold of it. Taken on by, by Fuster, called off by Facundo in behind who slows it down a tad. Pierre is out to the right hand side, leaves it now for Di Andrade. Rodrigo with the ball. He'll be told to use it by the umpire very shortly. Sterling taken on by Pierres. Diandrade into the centre. Sterling will go with him. Still with Rodrigo. He may or might even have a go from here. Ball left behind for Pierres. Surely Pierres will shoot and he will score. Well, very good teamwork by all concerned there for Landiana. They've tied it up. It's four goals apiece. Pierres the scorer. Three minutes to go in the third chucker. Back to the middle, clock restarted. Actually, it didn't stop, the ball is in play. And it is one Martin Nero, whistle's gone. The umpires are having a chat, saying that he probably fouled. 
and they're going to give the penalty to La Indiana. Is this a turning point in this match, I ask? Now a chance for La Indiana to take the lead for the first time in the game. 60 yard is the penalty, penalty four. Nero was the culprit from the lineup. A chance to make it 5-4. Facundo Pieres, the Andrade is teeing it up for his teammate. Pierre is on a 22-goal winning streak, 22-game winning streak, I should say, in high goal polo, 22 and above. Pierre is for 5-4. Oh, it stopped this block. They came off a defending player's model. It went into the goal anyway, and the goal is good from Pierre. Is. It is 5-4. Is that a turning point in this match? Well, it'll be better for La Bamba if they can react immediately and make it 5-5 before the end or maybe even increase the tally before the end of the third chakra two and a half minutes to play in the third ball is in play and the Andrade trying to get away from the line out in comes Facundo through from the back now he can go all the way here look at his chestnut run it's Facundo Pieres downfield being hunted by Sterling Facundo and I think he scored oh he gave it too much and that's a let off for La Bamba. It's out to the left hand side. And you would have bet every penny in your pocket that he would have scored up Pieres. He didn't. One Martin Nero for La Bamba. Fakes the hit out to the left. Nero. Sterling goes in behind now. Nero will go forward. Sterling says, go on, I'm going to pass it. There's the drive upfield along the ground. Nero will latch onto this one. And there's the hit upfield by Nero looking to find Jean-Francois. Jean-Francois into the opposite half of the field. Down the side he goes. Tries to bring it infield. Still with the co. The co into the bottom right-hand corner. Good possession here. Infield by the co. Nicely done. Dylan Bacon's back to defend. Called off in behind there by the Andrada. Rodrigo checks, turns, goes the opposite way, sends them all flying. There's a big drive by Dean Rada, looking to find teammate Jimbo Fuster, who is free. He's miles free. Then behind chasing is Juan Martin Nero. It is Jimbo Fuster. Can he make it 6 4 before the end of the chaka? Jimbo Fuster at the counter. The approach is perfect. Oh, the young Englishman, he put it out to the left and goes wide. It should be 7 4. One missed earlier by Facundo, this one missed by Fuster. And any given day of the week, they would have slotted those right through the middle. Not so. Pressure is out there from all, on all sides and all players. 5-4 to score remains. La Bamba get away with another one. Sterling with the ball from the back line. Oh, look at this. He's gone over the top. Now, they really are tense out there, aren't they? Sterling being pressured by Fuster. Fuster all over Sterling. And he may have stolen the ball. Near side backhand sent in towards Facundo Pieres. Surely Pieres! Goal is good! Fuster made it! Pieres finished it off and they deserved that, so they did because they were faffing around with it there with Sterling. He failed to make contact. It's 6 4. Well, that is the end of the third chakra, ladies and gentlemen. It could be a lot more for Landiana, but they only lead by two here. Scoreboard reads off of three. Landiana six, La Bamba de Araco four. All to play for coming into the beginning of the fourth chucker in about three or four minutes' time. Thank you all very much. My name is Gonzalo Pires. Hello, my name is Nicolas Pires. Hi, my name is Facundo Pires. I watch us in Garst bueno, primero es un privilegio tener a los tres juntos acá. Eh, más allá de que los tres juegan equipos diferentes acá en Inglaterra, eh, si se hacen el tiempo para poder estar en familia. Eh, sí, la verdad que eso casi siempre en todos los lugares que jugamos. Hay veces que nos toca juntos o a veces separados, pero este año coincidimos acá en que estamos los tres equipos en la zona de, de Midgers. Y bueno, cuando hay que alquilar casas o lo que sea, se trata de 
de alquilar lo más o menos cerca posible para, para que las familias estén cerca. ¿Y hablan sobre los partidos, los cruces, ahora que están enfrentados? ¿O no se habla de ese tema? No, bueno, a veces cuando, cuando, cuando queda que por ahí se juegue en contra o no, o cuando juegas contra algún equipo que, que por ahí uno le jugó y ya sabe un poco cómo juegan y eso, pero, pero ahora, ahora se dio que, bueno, que el equipo de Nico y yo pasamos a cuartos, pero no jugamos en contra, así que... Eh, yo vos jugás contra Talandracas que nunca, nunca yo no lo jugué así que no tenemos mucho para opinar eh, y yo juego contra la bamba que ustedes también se lo vio lo vio pasar ¿te pasa la información por lo menos? Nah, bueno un poco así, si hay cosas para ayudar y si hay cosas que, que, que se pueden decir y, y que pueden llegar a ayudar al otro equipo seguro ¿y chicanas entre ustedes? si hay algún partido algún enfrentamiento nah, no porque Tampoco se puede joder a que pierda, así que <risa> además de que perdió. Eh, ¿Se sienten parecidos en cómo compiten? Eh, ¿Cómo sienten los partidos? ¿Alguno es más, más tranquilo que otro? Yo soy el más tranquilo de lejos. Eh, no, yo por ahí el más tranquilo seguro de ese Gonza. Eh, no, pero siempre nos tomamos eh, todo con profesionalmente, siempre tratamos de ganar y todo, pero cada vez que entras a la cancha trata de ganar, pero siempre que por ahí nos toca en contra y todo. Es, es, es por ahí es diferente porque es un hermano, pero siempre con, con buena onda y actitud siempre se trata de ganar. Bueno, no, no hay tanto en, en polo, pero ¿qué pasa en fútbol? Cero de Boca, otro de River, de haber sido intensa la final de, del año pasado. Para ellos fue intensa. Así que no somos tan fanáticos. No, eh, <risa> sí, bueno, fue pura de Boca. Se cambió. Muy chico era. De chico, ¿no? Se cambió. No, sí, siempre la familia, el papá también es de Boca y... Pero bueno, también nos pasa que, que tenemos un amigo en común que es Leo Poncio, que juega en River, así que... Eh, nosotros no es que somos tan fanáticos del fútbol, sino que... Está bueno, por más que juegue en River, a mí yo un poco de sentimiento tengo que, que le vaya bien, así que... No es tan grave. Papo, vos te gustan los chicos, pero fuiste el último en sumarte al equipo de los padres. Sí, el último. Tardé un poquito más, pero bueno, nada, ahora disfrutando al máximo, así que contento. ¿Ya los haces subir a los caballos? Sí, ayer, primera vez, eh, pero igual es muy chiquito. ¿Has visto el polo inglés en estos últimos años? Creo que ha sido muy bueno. Inglaterra ha sido siempre muy tough, siempre muy competitivo, muchos equipos. Pero sí, creo que en los últimos años ha habido muchos equipos, muchos equipos buenos. Muchos equipos buenos. I think I learned there's a lot of players with the, with the handicaps a little bit lower than some, some other places in the world. So that makes it very competitive and a lot of teams, a lot of, a lot of patrons have chances to make good teams. So that makes it interesting for, for everybody. And um, I think, I don't know, I think uh, it's, it's, it's going very well. Uh, the fields are good, they're improving. Um, so I, I love it here. Something else about the, the fields here? Of the, See, field the fields stuff? are improving. Uh, first of all, started here in Cowdery, making loans one and two really good. And then Brooksville and, and field, some, three. Some field three of Ambersham. And, and then the last couple of years, uh, for me, guards starting to improve a lot. They, they improved field number two, field number one. And now they have a new field in, at Flemish Farm that they become really good. And what they say, hopefully, I don't know what number it is. Is it it's five or three? No? Behind field one in guards. I think in the next couple of years it's going to become a, a high goal polo field. So it looks like both clubs are improving a lot. Uh, I think it has room to have, a, at the moment, we have 12 teams. But it can be a place that can have close to 18. That would be probably the best number. Or that, because in one moment, around the late 90s or, or beginning of 2000, I think they reached to that level, about 17, 18 teams. So hopefully they can aim back again to that, that kind of polo. So can you tell me about the first part of the Queen's Cup? Uh, mine was a bit tough. Um, um, The first one to be out, so I let this two to for that question. No, it's been good. It's been 
bueno, some of the teams, my team being a bit lucky with this system of uh, 12 teams that only four go through to the quarters and the rest can have like another knockout game. So we've been lucky to be there and it's good for those teams, for example, my team, New Patron, first time playing the highway. Uh, so so you, you still have a chance after the league game. And hopefully, well, now we have the quarterfinals against San Andracas, it's going to be really tough, but these, these knockout games, they can be for everyone. So at the moment, they, they seem to be so really tough and level teams and all the games being decided by not so many goals. So that means the tournament is doing good and the teams are really good organized. Sé que sos meticuloso en los caballos. ¿Qué buscas en ellos? No, siempre bien montado desde chico, eh, eso gracias a, a papá que, eh, que jugábamos las potrillitos, siempre nos buscaba que estemos lo mejor montado posible y, y bueno, quedé con un gusto bastante exigente y me gustan que, que sean sobre todo fáciles, o sea, eh, no, no muy grande de tamaño, pero principalmente que tengan buena boca y bueno, después con agilidad se va, se va agarrando un poco de velocidad. ¿Ustedes tienen la misma exigencia? No, obviamente el caballo bueno es, nos gusta a todos, parecido, pero son distintos por ahí, distintas, distintos tipos de caballos que nos gusta a cada uno. Que eso está bueno porque podemos repartirnos un poco los caballos que tenemos en, en la cría. Eh, eh, pero sí, Gonza por ahí juega más las yeguas un poco más chicas. Eh, y a mí me gustan las que son buenas chicas me gustan, pero también me gustan las yeguas por ahí más grandes y con más fuerza y con más potencia, pero eh, la yegua buena nos gusta a todos, así que eso está bueno. Y vos Nico, tengo entendido que tenés una... Y lo, que me, lo que le sobra a ellos lo agarro yo. <risa> no, tenés una que tenés de juvenil. Sí, tuve la suerte, esa, esa la agarré yo y por suerte nunca se le subió en ellos porque me había sobrado poquito. Pero no, la verdad que eh, por ahí sí, más de chico me iba tocando lo que le iba sobrando a ellos, pero por un tema de edad y un tema de, de como cualquier hermano menor, pero la verdad que tenemos una lesión muy grande, mucha caballada, mucha, hay mucha gente trabajando atrás de esto y la verdad que tenemos la suerte de estar los tres bastante bien montados en, en, en todo lado del mundo, así que eh, estamos, no, no nos podemos quejar ninguno. Sé que además del polo les gusta el golf. Sí. ¿La mejor cancha que han jugado? A gusto. Eh, ah, a gusto, sí. ¿Y algún conocido que hayan compartido cancha, que les haya divertido? Y Facu ahí un poquito más. Sí, eh, yo el año pasado tuve la suerte de jugar dos días seguidos. Un día con Arnie Ernst y al día siguiente con Adam Scott. Así que esa fue una experiencia así como de golfista. Jugando al golf fue lo mejor que me pasó, lo más divertido. ¿Y nervios estar ahí al lado? Bastante, de... sí. porque Con Ernie Ernst no, porque estábamos jugando nosotros dos y uno más y era muy relajado. Pero con Adam Scott era un torneo y era un probam y había gente mirando y sí, y se dio un poquito más de nervios, pero los primeros solo, después ya se me pasó. Sí, verlo jugar de cerca es impresionante, eh, es divertido verlo jugar cuando practican, cuando tiran pelotas, eh, no solo a él, ¿no? a todos los jugadores, la verdad que sí, sí. si te gusta el golf es un problema. Si bien que pones un handicap de juego en el golf, que sería. Yo sí. ¿Mantendrían lo de ustedes o no? ¿Eh? ¿Mantendrían el que tienen en polo? No, eh, no, 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 ni pedo. Welcome back everyone, players coming back out for the start of the fourth chaka here on the Duke's Ground Guards Polo Club, a place in the semi-final of the Cartier Queen's Cup awaits the winner, La Diana 6, La Bamba de Areco 4, in what has been so far, I have to say, pretty scrappy game of polo compared to the magnificent polo we've seen throughout the course of this Cartier Queen's Cup. A lot of cut and mouse between the two teams. There's tension out there. Normal plays on balls that you would expect these top guys to send 60, 70, 80 yards downfield. Not making the contact. As I said, the tension 
pretty high, but I'm sure it'll get going at some stage. Umpire Julian Appleby lines the two teams up. Start of the fourth chucker. Six to Landiana, four to La Bamba. Right, here we go. Off we go. Ball is in play. Keen Hall, Nero, looking to try and get it. Bacon there, looking to try and get it away from Nero. Sterling there as well. Now Nero has established the line. There's a little pass by Nero, and then Nick tries to find teammate Sterling. Does so. Sterling with the ball over the top. He's got to go back and get it. Fix it around. Taken on by Diandrade in behind. Pierre is there in front. There's a little pass upfield. Trying to find Keen Hogg. Can't reach. Near side hole. Trying to get away. But the umpire's whistle is blown. Pierre is in there. Mallet raised in the, in the air behind hole. Whistle will go the way of Landiana. Spot white. Pierre is bright sunshine here at the Gars Polo Club, the Duke's ground. Pieris lets it go, upfield. Sterling goes in with the backhand, gets a hold of us. Fuster with a first time hit, sent downfield, trying to find the Andrada. Sterling has it covered, he checks. Look at these horses turn, my word. Sterling over the top, in behind is Keen Hall. Looking for the foul there, in comes Nero, backhand Nero. Hall turns, rather, that was Jean Francois. And Hall sends the ball down towards that Landiana goal. Here comes Sterling. Surely Sterling. Sterling, can he go all the way? Can he find it? Yes, he can. Pelon Sterling. Good play by all concerned. La Bamba. It's 6 5. Perfect start to the fourth chucker for La Bamba. Pierre is not happy. He's having a chat with the umpire. He's seen something there or something happened that he didn't like. Back to the middle, ends reverse, of course. And it will be with the lineup. Who will it be? Now, the scoreboard says 6 6. It's actually 6 5. Ball is in play. Who's got a who coming through from the back? It is Ster Facundo Pierre. Sterling's in front. Nero goes around the side door. Jimbo Fuster's there. Good back up by the young Englishman. Fuster leaves the ball. The big drive by Facundo Pierre is out to the right. That wasn't far away. Score remains 6 5. Don't mind the scoreboard. Nero from the Labamba back line. To bring it forward. Sterling, where's he going? There's the hit upfield. Look at this big drive now. And he's got a hold of it. Another big one by Sterling. Sent down towards the Keen Hall is out in front of the chasing Dylan Bacon. Over the top on the near side. Over the top by Jean Francois. The backhand by the Andrade comes off the horse of Sterling and it finds Facundo Pierres, who turns it around. Fuster there in company with Juan Martin Nero. Here comes Facundo Pierres down the middle of the Duke's crown. The ball just bounced over the mall as he went to strike it. Backhand by Sterling. Not much onto it. Over the top from Hall. Coming in now Jean Francois, but at the Andrade. Keen Hall is looking for the penalty, the whistle is silent. The Andrade has the call. Still there with the Andrade, just flicks it out. Waiting is Sterling, little next shot sent down towards the goal. It's sneaking in, Jimbo Fuster will finish it off. Good play by all concerned, this time from La, from La Indiana. Now I make it seven goals to five. The scoreboard 7-7. Seven, seven. I don't know what on earth is happening with the scoreboard here at Gars, but anyway. 7-5 the score. Back in play, another lineup one. This time by Jimbo Fuster, but he's gone over the top. Nero was quickly onto that, taken on by Pierres. Pierres gets the hook. Ooh. Did he foul? I think so. He's having wars with Appleby and he's not happy for Kundo. Whistle's gone. Who will receive the penalty? Who will it be in favour of? I think it's Labamba. Yes, it is. Now, back chat. Now, it looks like Pierre is. 
has got himself a yellow card and they are going to bring the ball upfield and he's still having a chat with the umpire. If he's not careful, he'll get another yellow card and be sent to the Simbin for two minutes. They're bringing the ball upfield at least to the 60-yard spot, maybe even further if he's not careful. Sixty yards is the penalty in favour La Bamba. Now Nero's gone off, got onto a fresh mount on the grey. Sterling is setting the ball up for him. Nero is I think it's four from four with the penalties. He's definitely three from three. Now he's onto a fresh mount here. But she looks like she has a nice temperament, this horse, not jigging around or looking to get into the chucker. Nice and relaxed, ears pricked. Here comes one Martin Nero for 7-6. It's along the ground. It's out to the left-hand side and wide. 7-5 the score. Lock in for Kundo Pieris. Hall as ever was waiting. Another huge hit by Pieris sent upfield. Nero comes back to defend on the fresh grey. Taken on in behind by Di Andrada. He flicks the ball to the boards. Juan Martin, the Brazilian chasing there. Nero, look at this, look at this force thrown around. Clever play, Juan Martin. Nero, he's left Di Andrada behind. The right off a strong bar. Look at this from Jimbo Fuster. Nero Fuster, backhand, beautifully done. Sterling reads it well into the centre he goes. And Sterling will try and bring it around now. Being hunted down there by Facundo Pieres. In behind is Keen Hall. Pieres gets a little flick. Backhand, unlucky, comes off the horse from Nero. And Sterling gets it back. Whistle a Sterling turned in front of the Andrade. Well, it's still pretty scrappy out here. Hasn't got going. 7 5 the score. Penalty, Lion Diana. Spot hit to the white team. Pieris fuses onto a fresh mount, as is Dylan Bacon, and the ball sent out to the left by Facundo to Rodrigo. Fuster will take care of Nero, and look at this good work by Fuster. Leaves the ball free and the man free. That is De Andrade. Pieres has gone forward. There's the big lofted drive by De Andrade, sent down towards the target. Pieres is on the end of it. Can he get control of it? No, he left it behind. In comes one Martin Nero. On the grey, checks, brings it around. Going forward, Jean-Francois de Coe, Nero's lost it. Sterling is there to help him out. He gets control. He looked for a big drive, didn't get it, but he has another bite of the cherry. And there it is, sent up field. Now trying to find, it'll be one Jean-Francois. Jean-Francois de Coe, over the top he goes, and it'll be the Andrade. Little flick around the corner, comes back on his own line. Look at this from the Brazilian. What a clever play from the Andrade. Fuster, oh, over the top he goes again. They're missing this ball here. On a, any given day, they take these balls with their eyes closed. Backhand, Pieres, but it'll be taken on by Nero. Nero with the call, called off by Bellon Sterling. There's the little pass in field. Stopped by Fuster, but Nero gets it back. Facundo's chasing. Nero, the two ten goalers go to go. Juan Martin, can he get the uh, flick inside? In comes Jean Francois de Coe. What a goal! Jean Francois de Coe! My word, he pulled that one out of the hat, didn't he? Superb from the Frenchman. And it is seven goals to six. Wow, de Coe, beautifully done. Pieres has the ball from the lineup. He's trying to get away from the chasing Nero. Taken on by Sterling. The backhand is strong. Facundo takes it out of the air. Backhand again. Oh, Nero thought he had a play. Pieres was going forward. The umpire was right on top of it. The whistle's gone. It'll be a penalty in favour of Landiana. Now, 
where will it, they place the ball. It'll be at least a penalty three from 40 yards. Yep, that's what it is. So they can defend it. 7-6 is the score. The scoreboard is wrong if you're looking at that. Facundo Pieres will strike this. Seconds to go to the end of the fourth chucker. In what has been a scrappy game of polo, has to be said. Facundo. Here he goes. He's put it high. He's put it wide. Oh, my word. There's a big old breeze here as well. Probably played a little part in that. Knock in. And Luscious Lou is going to bring me some mate. Good on you, Lou. Thanks, babe. Nero from the back brings it forward for La, for La Bamba. Big drive by Sterling, sends it out to the left-hand side. Here comes Nero, taken on by, Dia, by Facundo, well to his right-hand side. Nero now, here we go, flat out. Near side, one Martin Nero, what a play. Pierres goes back to the fin. Can he get the backhand? Yes, he can. Job taken on by Jean-Francois. Over the top, Sterling will keep the attack going. Belong, can he get the score before the end of the chucker? 7-6 to score. 7-7. Seven, seven. Sterling, Sterling, Sterling! Goal, Sterling! Beautifully done! That's more like it. That's more the ball we see here in this Cartier Queen's Cup. It's all tied up going into the fifth. 7-7. Seven, seven. Thank you all. We'll be back in a moment. Juan Britos has the break on the chasing the Luzonetta. Juan Britos takes the ball on the half volley. Beautiful play. The approach shot out to the left hand side of the goal. Little cut shot. Juan Britos. No, un partido difícil. Arrancamos mal. El primer chaca perdimos 4-0. Pero también el otro lado de Arquiza. Y trying to get away was. Look at this. Arquiza stolen it away from the Luzonetta and Ali Muccio. Arquiza can he go all the way? It's a close to go, but he doesn't do the next shot. What a play! And Joe has sent it up for Britos. Britos over in the far corner. In goes in his outlet. Britos shoots from distance. Has he found the angle? Oh, what a strike! Y después de repente empezamos a jugar mejor, nos ordenamos un poquito y ahí jugamos bien y creo que jugamos bien el resto del partido. Tuvimos un chakra al final que nos metieron un par de goles, pero por suerte los pudimos dominar casi todo el partido. To keep the attack going, Ali, angle shot required. He shoots for goal. Where's it going? Mo, oh, what a goal! But they're all starting for the ball. And there's a huge big hit by Okiza sent down to the goal mark. A hell of a hit going up there. Who's going to get there first? Four oh, in comes Barton! Welcome back everybody, the crowd here in the stand giving these players a big hand before they start this fifth chucker. Well, it opened up there at the end of the, f of the fourth. Hopefully it'll continue in the same vein. 7-7 seven, seven to score, two more chuckers to play. A place in the semi-final of the Cartier Queen's Cup await the winners. And umpire Julian Appleby will bowl the ball into play. Ball is in play and it is Nero who gets it for La Bamba. Taken on by Fuster. Nero out to the side. He takes it now. Look at this. He has a little bit of space to maneuver. Facundo straight in there. There's the drive by Nero. Looking to find Jean Francois de Co. Coming in and behind there is, is uh, De Andrade sent down towards the right of the goal. Just overshot the runway a tad. It goes wide. It'll be a knock in from the Landiana back line. 7 7. Pieres 
for Landiana. Cuts out to the left hand side. Goes past Keen Hall. Here we go now. Pierre, as he said, I've had enough of this faffing around. And he wants to try and get rocking and rolling here a little bit. Here, Hall must get out of the way. Left now for Di Andrade. Rodrigo. Facundo takes Keen Hall away. Di Andrade now will be taken on by Sterling. He lets it go upfield for looking to find Jimbo Fuster. Nero's there with Fuster. Fuster there. Strong Fuster. Flicks it away. Little tap under the neck. Fuster. Over the top, backed up by Di Andrade. Facundo's there also. Now Sterling is with Di Andrade. Facundo free and behind. And he takes control. Pierres has the ball. Facundo shoots from distance. Wide across the goal mount to the left. Well, he made that look so easy, didn't he? That was a hit from about 80 yards. Just looked like he dropped the mallet head on the ball. And boom, off it went at the rate of knots. Juan Martin Nero, La Bamba, will bring the ball forward. It's pretty tense out there, ladies and gentlemen, I can tell you. Fuster's waiting. Nero cuts out to his right. Still with Juan Martin. He's made space. He's got away from Fuster and for the moment. Still with Nero. Here we go. Nero wants to send a big ball downfield. Look at this. John Francois free. Can the Frenchman go all the way? He scored a sensational goal earlier. John Francois to go. What a goal. What a play from the Frenchman again. And he's put his team into the lead. It's eight goals to seven. La Bamba de Areco. Back to the middle, they come near, they look for the backhand, it goes through all those horses' legs into the opposite side of the field. Facundo Pierres goes back to the fence, checks around now, Jimbo Fuster takes out Keane Hall. Pierres has the ball. Hall goes over the top of the backhand, almost comes off his horse as well. Facundo trying to get away, there's a lot of traffic there, but Facundo still has it. Look at this, Velcro on the end of his mouth, look at this from Pierres. Still in goes Hall, trying to get a hold of Facundo, still has it. Oh, it just popped up, backed up there by Jimbo Fuster beautifully. Fuster barges his way through, Jimbo Fuster stopped by Nero. Here comes Sterling, around the corner, he takes it into the corner, gets away from the... Landiana players, now Nero trying to get away, back up is good from Jean-Francois, the goal scorer, Nero reaching out there, reaching back, in comes Keane Hall, gets the big kid upfield, look at the right off by a Di Andrade, he's strong isn't he, back comes straight downfield, trying to give it a fine for Kundo, taken out of the play by Sterling, back come by Nero, infield he send it, Dylan Bacon and Jean-Francois was caught betwixt and between, it'll be a white penalty. Oh my word, it's all happening now, boys and girls. Still hasn't opened up really. They're looking to try and do so, but the marking is so tight. Well, it's actually sensational stuff from both sides, defensively. La Bamba have the lead by one. Jean-Francois with the last two goals for his team, La Bamba. The penalty is from the spot. It's about oh, 80 yards out. So more than likely, Pierres will have a go at this. It won't be a problem distance-wise for Facundo. That's for sure. So Pierres to level the score. Just over three minutes remaining in the fifth chaka, looking to make it 8 8. He's put it high. He's put it wide. Didn't get a hold of it. Dylan Bacon tried to stop it from going over the back line. It'll be a knock in to La Bamba. Juan Martin Nero from the back line. La Bamba de Areco. There's the big drive again by Nero, looking to find Keane Hall. He's using this number two here. Keane gets the drive. Bacon goes after him. Keane Hall. Sterling's in behind. Sterling picks it up, all up, and it pops over the side. Unluckily for Sterling, and goes out of play. It'll be a hit from the white for the white team. La Indiana umpire counts down. Eight seconds to play. Ball in play. Facundo 
Big drive by Pierre is trying to find Jim. Nero has him covered. Does he? The ball bounced there. In comes. It was Keen Hall that saves the day, gets the backhand. Here comes Sterling on the near side, helped out by one Martin Nero. Nero down the side, he goes again. Stolen away. Oh, flipped out of the air by Keen Hall. What a play by Hall. Now Facundo over the top by Facundo. Pierres de Andrade will check and turn and bring it around to Indiana. Pressure now on the bomber. Nero's there. Ball left behind. Jean Francois de Co trying to bring it around. St stays in field. Facundo taken on by Hall. He's been everywhere here, Keen Hall. He's playing a magnificent game. What a play by Jean-Francois de Coe. They steal the ball away from Facundo Pieres. Uh, but P Facundo gets it back. Still with Pieres. Backhand Nero missed. D'Andrade, surely Sterling's in front. D'Andrade just got to keep the ball going forward. Nero, backhand. Oh my word, what's happening out there? Who's there now? It's Facundo Pieres taken on by Sterling. He's gone over the top. Good work, Dylan Bacon. Over the top, Fuster. Backhand again. Jean Francois on near side. Can't get it. Pieres there, surely. Oh my word, what's going on here? Nero Facundo Pieres gets the equaliser. It's all tied up. And they deserved that, didn't they? They had to work very, very hard for it. But the defence was very, very strong from La Bamba. They made him work for it, but they got it in the end. It's eight goals apiece. Oh, a minute remaining in the fifth. This is anybody's game here. <clears throat> eight, eight to score. Off he go. Who'll get the next goal? Keen Hall with Pieris. Sterling tried to steal it away. Nero backhand. Fuster's back to defend. Jimbo can take his time, bring this ball around. There's no challengers. Jimbo with the ball. He'll cut in field now, Jimbo. Just had to reach back and get a hold of it. He's still there. Jimbo, Fuster, still with Fuster. He's returning possession here. Look for a big drive. Didn't get it. Dylan Bacon comes through. What a play by Dylan. And he's found Pieres. Pieres going to go with Nero. Near side, Pieres. Go on, Lasso. Facundo Pieres. Beautifully done. Great play initially by all concern. And especially... Jimbo Fuster and Dylan Bacon. 9-8. Landiana regaining the advantage with seconds to go to the end of the fifth chucker here in a tense contest on the Duke's ground, Cartier Queen's Cup. That is the end of the fifth. They'll be back out in a few moments with the sixth. Don't go away. Don't turn off your screens. Scoreboard reads, Landiana 9, La Bamba de Areco 8. We'll see you in a few moments. Pires goes forward, here comes the goal shot, lovely goal, way down the field, Facundo, Dylan comes in, stolen there by Barto Castanola, Barto Castanola shoots on the angle, it's looking good, it's looking very good! I think he's off the field, in comes Andrade, Andrade reaches out, I think that's going to go all the way, Andrade! In comes Andrade, what a sensational goal! A great bit, horse called Rosario, launched there by Barta Castanola, picked up by Heta Castanola, what a goal! Normally plays her in the third chucker, she's a tremendous mare, he leaves it behind, called off it by Andrade, Andrade launches it towards the target area, it's looking good, it's looking very good! and taken beautifully out there it's Jimbo Fuster who's been left on his own Jimbo Fuster can he put it through it looks good it looks good what a goal here comes Facundo on cartridge this horse from Ireland he drives it towards the guy I don't believe it team here comes brother Barto brother Barto Castanola Barto Barto little back shot to Heta Barto to Heta struggling to catch Facundo Pires Pires in the air I don't believe it I don't believe it what a fantastic goal she's in does just enough to hook Heta stick Barto comes through from the rear Heta Barto Barto shoots and he puts it through
and the ball runs loose for Facundo Pires, who plays a little bit of tennis. Here comes Facundo Pires. He's got no one in front of him. He's going to have to do all the work on his own. With him comes Barto Castanola through towards the area. Facundo Pires. Facundo. Welcome back, Facundo, everybody. Facundo. Facundo Pires. Backhand shot. James Welcome Fuster. Back. Ball runs loose. Round in the under nine. La Pombera Eco eight six. And Chaka. he's put it through. Andrade put it through. Four game that here. We'll seal the match for them. Andrade La came in. The lead. And number sixteen goes Jones to La Indiana. Main part of the fifth chucker, but La Indiana came back. And great play from Jimbo Fuster and indeed Dylan Bacon to set up for Kundo Pieres near side. Shot for the goal, which put him into the lead. 9 8, the ball is in play, and Sterling gets it for La Bamba. Taken and stolen away by Facundo Pierres. Backhand by Pierres. Looking to find Fuster, who's free here. Fuster, oh, over the top from Fuster. The Andrade can't get a hold of it. And now it'll be Juan Martin Nero. Fakes the backhand now, just leaves it for Sterling. Sterling, Jean Francois gone forward. There's the pass outfield. There's no one there. Oh, who's going to come in here first? It'll be Facundo Pierres. Gets it back for Landiana. Turns it around. These horses absolutely incredible here as Facundo just goes forward the Entrada and they're saying hit it and there's the hit out to the right hand side. Dylan Bacon will take care of Sterling. Good work by Bacon. Next shot by Pierre sent in field. Here goes Jimbo Fuster. Fuster goes to goal. Fuster. Fuster can't find it. Who's next? Oh, it goes over the back line. He couldn't get the offside. Backhand. Couldn't find it. Nine goals to eight. Unlucky Jimbo Fuster, he's played exceptionally well here this afternoon. Nero from the back line, La Bamba. Decides to go out on his own, over to the far side. Nero, look for a big one. Here comes Sterling, Sterling, can he go all the way? Has he got the horse? Chasing is Facundo Pieres, gets there first, backhand field. Facundo was very strong indeed. Nero turns very sharpish. Also turning onto it was the Andrade over on the far boards, and it's Rodrigo has the ball. Now look at Jimbo Fuster going forward. Oh, he's gone over the top, backhand missed by Jean-Francois, left now for Sterling. There's no one home for the team, for La Bamba in behind. Dylan Keen Hall stopped by... The Andrade, Nero, the Andrade, Mele in the middle. Sterling comes back in, steals it away. He has space to check and turn. Jimbo will challenge him. Sterling looking to try and set it up here. Tense moments. Big drive sent down by Sterling. Looking to find Jean Francois de Coe. He scored two already. Can he get another one? Angle shot. Jean Francois de Coe. Wide. Oh, my word. Almost. Knock in from the back. 9-8 to score. Facundo Pieres. We have a whistle on the play. Facundo puts his hand to his head. Now I was watching. I was watching Facundo with the ball. And I think, I think that it was blocking Dylan Bacon. The first player going to the ball was blocked and the penalty will go the way of La Bamba. Big chance to make it 9-9. The player going to the person bringing the ball in must not be impeded by a teammate of the player bringing the ball in. <clears throat> One Martin Nero to make it 9-9. 60 yards, tense moments, La Bamba. It's high, it's wide, Nero. Ay, 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 ay. La Bamba won't be happy with that. Landiano. Happy days for the white team. So far. Facundo Pieres. 
Brings the ball out. Oh, he's left it behind. Sterling tries to get away there from the Andrade, but the Andrade gets there first. Rodrigo Sterling comes in again. The Andrade just checks up. Now let Sterling go past. Sterling won't give him an inch. Look at this. Keen Hall will go in there and try and help out his teammate. Has Sterling throwing it back? Facundo Pierre is there to help out the Andrade. The ball sent out to the side. Here it comes. The Andrade is over the halfway line. Keen Hall driving in there hard with him. Down the side they go. Rodrigo the Andrade. Can he keep the ball in play? Yes, he can. Look at the ground just cutting up in behind heavy rain here and there's the pass the hit infield the Andrade sent down towards the target Juan Martin Nero brings the ball across field now for La Bamba de Areco Juan Martin has time to check up over on the far side good work by his teammate Sterling takes care of Facundo Pieres oh was he giving it away there Pieres Sterling has got to go back and challenge backhand by Sterling turns it into the center here comes the mm, Andrade correction it is Facundo Dylan Bacon's over the top, left behind for, for the Andrade. Rodrigo, he might have a go from here. There's the hit from the Andrade. It's out to the left and sneaks past the left-hand post and goes wide. Tense moments, 9-8 to score. Landiana, no goals yet, in the sixth. Three minutes to play. Sterling, I should say Nero, brings it from the back. Nero. Out to the right he goes. He's looking to bring this ball upfield. Still with Nero. Oh, whistle. Now, I didn't see at all what happened there. <laughs> Looks like they were blocking. Again, this time it's at the opposite end. Tincho Merlis is screaming here on the side. It's going to be a penalty to, La, to La Indiana. This time it was the white team that was blocking the player going to the player with the ball from the opposite team. If that makes sense to you, well then, hallelujah. Two and a half minutes remaining in the sixth chucker. This is a possible, possible winner here if he gets this. Pierre is from 60 yards, looking for 10-8, La Indiana. It's along the ground, it's along the ground, it's gone wide. Did it come off a defending player's mallet? This mallet's raised in the air, and I think it came off a defending player's mallet. Sterling is going to the umpire and saying no, it didn't. Now hang on a sec, a little bit of controversy here. It's very tense out there, very, very tense. Now Sterling was sure it came off a line, the Arnold's player mallet went out to the right and wide. Initially a safety 60 was given, so it would have been another free hit to Facundo Pieres. It looks like they placed the ball on the back line. Sterling has won the day and it'll be a hit in from the back line with two minutes to play for La Bamba de Areco. 9-8 to score. Two minutes to score. Plenty of time here. Ha, oh, he says. Nero sends it outfield. Looking to find Sterling. Chasing it is the Andrade. Far side. Jean-Francois in behind him. Sterling on the board, Facundo comes in and steals it away. Now where's his support there? They're right off by Sterling in behind. Look at this, Facundo into the center. He comes, he has space to maneuver here. Jimbo Fuster is with Nero. Surely Facundo Pieres will go all the way. And Diana, oh, he went across the goal mount. He couldn't get the final touch. And it goes out to the right and wide. My word, it's all happening here. They're peppering the goal here, Landiana. They can't find a bullseye. Minute and a half remaining. La Bamba have to get it up the opposite end in quick, smart fashion here. Nero, bring it forward. Juan Martin. There's the angle shot out to the left, looking to find David Sterling. He's put it on the end of his stick. Perfect pass from Nero. First time hit by Sterling, sent down towards Jean-Francois Decaux. Up the middle of the ground he goes. Decaux, look for a big drive, gets it. Jean-Francois, near side. Jean-Francois, where's the rest of them? Decaux comes in, Facundo is there, around the corner he takes it, gets it away from the goal mount. Very, very clever play, cool as you like from Facundo Pieres. Ball left behind, Dylan Bacon helps the ball out to the side. Bacon, Landiana, clock winding down, a minute to go. La Bamba have it back, have they? 
They have the ball. Sterling has it over on the far side. They have a minute to play. Now it's one Martin Nero. He knows he's got to hurry up here. Nero, surely Nero. Oh, he's gone over the top. The ball goes over to the side again into the corner. And I think it is De Andrada who has the ball. Far side, Rodrigo De Andrada. Now it's Facundo Pieres. Pieres looking. All he got to do is re retain possession now sent up towards Jimbo Fuster Fuster called off by Facundo there's the pass upfield by Facundo towards Jimbo Fuster over the top do you believe it Nero's got to get it back down the other end as quickly as he can Facundo was looking for a foul the whistle is silent he's left the ball behind backhand by Facundo the backhand oh my word where's it gone out to the left and wide it looks like it's too little too late for La Bamba, Sterling, the Hooter goes, the Hooter has gone, gallant in defeat, La Bamba their echo, what a game of polo ladies and gentlemen, it wasn't the fast open polo we were expecting in this Cartier Queen's Cup, instead it was a war of attrition purely and simply and it was brilliant play from all sides, defensive play from both teams, superb, it's La Indiana's day, La Bamba de Areco can hold her heads high. Final score here on the Duke's Crown, Guards Polo Club. La Indiana 9, La Bamba de Areco 8. Congratulations to Michael Bickford and his team, La Indiana. Many, many con con commiserations to Jean-Francois de Co and La Bamba de Areco. We hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget, we will be back tomorrow. 12 o'clock, Castle Ground, Flemish Farm. And 3 o'clock, Queen's Ground Guard Polo Club. We'll see you all then. Until then, thank you all for watching. Bye bye.